Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I want to show you how to prepare grids for electron microscopy and these are the things that you will need. So you need these py Pyrex um, glassware, um, amyl acetate, and um, a bulb and a pipette, these tweezers, uh, the grids, these are still um, not coated with carbon and some parafilm and petri dishes so first you want to fill up the circular um, glassware with water and fill it completely up and um, until it overflows so this way you will have a really flat surface So the point of having a flat um, surface for the water is so when you drop, um, when you put a drop of amyl acetate, and you only need one drop, no more and no less, um, is so that it will create a layer on top of water. So this way, you can physically just be able to lay your grids on on there. And as you will see, you have to wait a few seconds and then you will be able to see from the edges that a layer has formed on the water. Then um, with the copper, copper colored side of the grids facing up, you're going to lay out your grids on the surface as you can see. And it's good to do it um, in a regular pattern as I'm doing now in a three by three kind of box. So the point here is just to remember that the silver side should be facing down and the copper side should be facing up because when you put the parafilm on later, um, you will be able to see the silver side and that's the part, the side that will get um, coated with carbon. So now I take some parafilm and try to make sure that it's very flat and very smoothly you're going to catch the whole um, paraf the whole amyl acetate layer that has the grids bound to it. And then you have to let it completely dry so there's no water left on the whole um, parafilm grid. And yeah, give it enough time so it dries completely. Don't rush into the carbon coating when you're not sure if it's dry. And these are just how um, the grids look. And now I'm repeating the process so that I'll have three sets um, of prepared grids that are ready to be carbon coated. This is a good practice just in case something goes wrong. And um, because the carbon coating process is um, sometimes not too accurate, in case there is a um, larger than expected deposit of carbon or um, some grits flying off for some reason, it's better to have just an extra preparation um, so that you don't have to come back and um, repeat this whole process so and you want to make sure you tape the sides you have um, something heavy like a penny on the side and a piece of filter paper that's bent um, just so you can track how much carbon you're depositing and yeah this is the instrument that we use to do the coating and this is the graphite so this part, um, it's good practice to always take it out and sharpen everything and ensure that there's a good contact again because every time it's used, um, the, the whole contact, it gets a little bit um, used up. So I'm just unscrewing the pins and taking these out 
and there's a flat side and a side that has the rod like thin rod um, so you want to take the side that has the thin rod put it in this kind of tool that I'm using right now so uh, yeah the I'm actually doing it opposite here but um, I fix it later you have to make sure the thin side of the this instrument is um, where the other thin side of the rod is and then this um, you can just figure it out by yourself because um, the thin part is where it will fit into this sharpener like how it is here this is the correct way and you will just insert the thin side in with the part that you want to sharpen and push it open in the sharpener and yeah you're holding it in place with this pin so it's all sharpened up and now I have to sand the surface so you sand the surface for the thin rod part and also the um, the other graphite uh, that has the thicker um, side just yeah make sure everything's flat because you want to create a good contact between the two pieces So then I remove the little tool from the graphite piece and put everything back the way um, it was in the beginning. So first I insert the one that has this thinner um, pointy side, push it in completely. Then I'm just placing the other side, but they're not pinned yet. Then I'm going to... Um, screw in this part and secure that piece then i can completely push the other one and this will um, increase the contact between the two pieces you have to make sure that it has a really really good contact otherwise when you um, turn on this instrument and press um, the button for it to um, deposit the carbon if the contact is bad nothing will happen so it's really really key to make sure there's a good contact and yeah and also I put the lid back on make sure the lid is on really well because otherwise the suction um, and air pumping will not happen so as soon as you turn it on it's going to pump air out from the chamber and you will see the pressure going down and you want to be patient here just let it go um, down as much as it can and then wait for a while until until it's really stable and if it is not if this is not happening it means you didn't put the lid on properly so once um, the, the pressure is stable then you can press this button and I think the timer was uh, three seconds and the voltage was four so and then with this setup I did about three of these um, three times um, of pressing the start button and it is sort of um, a qualitative way to determine how how much carbon you want it to be deposited and the way um, most people look at it is by how much um, you can see the color is different on this filter paper so there's a little bit of um, there's a white side that is the blank and then you can see there's some carbon deposited on the other sides and um, you can keep um, these filter papers and if something worked for you in the past Make sure, make sure you replicate the same um, kind of color or um, carbon deposit the next time. So yeah, this is a very qualitative way, but it's based on my experience. This is the way to go because um, usually the instruments don't measure accurately.
Finally, use a tweezer and slowly remove the grits and store them in this um, and until you want to stain them.